Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Today, we're going to continue our series with the Tableau Prep templates. So if you don't know, you haven't checked out yet, um, recently I reached out to the Flirlidge twins, talked about maybe creating some templates for Tableau Prep that handle all of the data preparation modeling side of some of the really popular uh, Viz templates that are out there. And so last time we went over the sigmoid bump chart um, and so today we're going to do another one that's a little bit more recent. We're going to do the coxcomb chart. Um, so this one is very similar to the previous one, but um, we're going to simplify our build process a little bit. And just again, the whole purpose of this is to understand what's happening behind the scenes with this one. But again, a lot of the real work happens inside of the workbook. Um, and so I'm going to post a link to that. So that way you can go find the original blog post and the workbook to plug this all into. Um, but let's take a look at how to actually build this uh, template out. So let's dive in. So I've got prep opened up here and I'm just gonna connect to the uh, original Excel sheet. So if I go to connections, Microsoft Excel, uh, I'm gonna go to my downloads and I'll see that um, Coxcomb template. And so we've got two sheets in here, data and model. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate the model sheet inside of prep and uh, create my densification from that. Now, uh, generating this inside of prep is something that I've covered multiple times in a couple of previous videos. So I won't get into the details of that. What I'll do is I'll link the uh, previous videos going over that and I'll just kind of do a high level overview of what's happening. Um, so I'm gonna drag in my data step here and to generate that uh, model sheet which when we look at the original template, the model sheet is one column called point with values from zero to 200. So to generate this inside of prep, uh, I've already got these sequence of steps saved, which this is another useful feature in prep, being able to insert or save a series of steps and reuse those in multiple flows. So I'm gonna go to my plus button, insert flow, uh, I'm going to browse my files. It goes automatically to my prep repository in my flows folder, and I've got my dynamic scaffold steps here. Boom, there is my scaffold steps. Um, I happened to save the particular sequence of steps to create this chart. And so you can see what's happening here is uh, I've created two columns, one with the value of zero, one with the value of 200. So I just created a calculated field, put in zero, created another one, put in 200. Then I kept only those two fields because those, that's all I need to make my uh, scaffold. Now you can see that when it creates these two columns, it generates a value for every row in the data set. I only need one row. And so that's where my deduplicate step comes in. So I added an aggregate step and I grouped by both of those fields. And so it's gonna return a unique grouping for uh, each, or it's gonna return a row for each unique grouping of values or each unique combination of values. And so there's only one unique combination. I only get one row back. Um, next, uh, I need to pivot those into one column because since I'm gonna eventually use the new row step in order to generate a scaffold from integers, they need to be in one column. And so I use a wildcard pivot on point, which pivots those into one column. Uh, and then I remove the automatically generated pivot names field. I add my new row step and I use values from one field. It automatically goes and looks at the minimum and maximum points uh, and it goes to increments of one. And so here you can see it generated each of those rows automatically in between zero and 200. And what I did after that is created a join field with a value of one so that way I can have something to join back to my data. So now I'm gonna add a step here because I need to add a join field here that I can join my scaffold with. So I'm gonna create a field, call it join, enter a value of one. And also one thing I'm gonna do here, you can see that this section is a numeric value. Uh, I'm actually gonna change that to a string value because uh, in the template in the workbook, uh, section is a string value. And so I wanna make sure that when I swap the data sources that happens cleanly. So I'm gonna click here, change this to string. 
And so now I'm gonna bring the scaffold here, drag it onto my join step or to my main data. Let's call this Densify because that's what's happening here. So you can see in my original um, table, right? I've got one row here for each of my unique values. Here, I've got one row for each point from zero to 200. So in Densify, uh, since we're joining on one equals one, well, I've got 201 rows in my scaffold that have a value of one. So that's essentially gonna blow up my data set. So if I look here in the settings, I can see I originally started with 36 rows from my data sheet. And because those are being multiplied 201 times, I end up with 7,236 rows in my final output. And so that's the real concept of data densification. I'm exploding or expanding my rows. I'm generating one row for each of my points. So that way the visualization in Tableau works how we need it to. And so now I'm gonna go here, add an output. I'm gonna call this um, coxcomb chart template dash yt and browse. Um, yep, so that looks good, except I'm gonna run that flow. Actually, before I run that flow, I'm actually gonna come in this densify step and I'm gonna remove these two join fields. So because prep processes and steps, it does the join first. And then when I remove these, it does join and then remove. Another useful thing in prep that can really help you clean up your data because you only need to include fields as you need them and can remove them once that has already processed. Um, so I really only need one data set with these four fields. And so I'm gonna go, and go ahead and output that and run my flow, replace this, done. And so now I'm gonna open up the template from the uh, Flourish Twins website. And let's see. So this is the original chart, right? So I'm gonna go to the data tab, go to my new data source, um, connect to more because it's a hyperfile. I found my output here, open that up. Now go back to my Coxcomb sheet and I'm gonna do a swap, replace the data source, replace the original one with the extract and wait for that to load up. And there you go, it's swapped cleanly. You can see my values are still carrying through and the chart is functioning exactly how we expect. Um, all of those calculations that actually make the chart work um, carried over. Again, if you wanna see the how, use cases, um, all of that, uh, the Flurlich twins are the real pioneers behind all that. Um, and so I'll link to their blog so you can check that out. Uh, the purpose of these templates, again, is to incorporate prep into your process and to understand what's happening behind the scenes with this data. Um, so with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, stick around for more prep templates that'll be coming out. And um, I hope to see you in the next one.